Hello friends, this video on organic chemistry basic part 23 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Let's talk about bond now. As I told, we have different kinds of bond cleavage. So we'll, we'll talk about the bond. So what is bond? So if you see a family, right, there's a bond between husband, wife and kids, right? There's a bond. There's a bond between these and that's why we call a family. Similarly, in my organic compound, there's a bond between carbon hydrogen or carbon nitrogen and that binds them together, right? So they, there's a bond between uh, various atoms, right? So the definition of the bond says it is nothing but attraction between atoms. So in the family, we see there's attraction between husband and wife. So there's a bond between husband and wife. Similarly, there's attraction between atoms and that form that allows for the formation of chemical substance which has more than one atom. For example, methane is one simplest hydrocarbon I can think of. So there's a bond between this carbon and this hydrogen, this carbon, this hydrogen, this carbon, this hydrogen. These bonds helps in, allows formation of this methane, which is a compound which has more than two or two or more than two atoms. So if you see, this has five atoms and there's a compound which is formed because of the attraction between carbon and hydrogen. So there are bonds, if you see there are four bonds between carbon and hydrogen. Correct. And what is the cause of the bond? This bond is caused by electrostatic force of attraction between opposite charge. Okay. Or they can be either between the electrons and the nuclei or they can be result of dipole attraction. For example, you have you can have a bond Na plus and Cl minus. This is also one bond. Correct. So if I have some positive charge and there is some negative charge, there will be a bond between these also, right? So this can be electrostatic bond or it can have a dipole-dipole attraction. For example, hydrogen force, if you see, well, a different kind of bond. So they are weak bonds and strong bond, right? So strong bonds are generally covalent bond and ionic bond. Covalent bond, I can give you an example. For example, methane, right? I have a, a covalent bond where we have sharing of electron. And ionic bond, I can give you an example of NaCl, where if you see Na is, uh, there's a transfer of electron actually, and both are saturated, both are happy, but there's a positive charge on sodium and negative charge on chlorine. So there's an electrostatic force of attraction between sodium and chlorine, and thus this bond is formed. So in this chapter, we'll focus more about covalent bond. And for the weak bond, we have something called dipole-dipole interaction, London dispersion force, hydrogen bonding. So we studied all these things in the past few chapters where we talked about different kind of bond. So in this case, since we are talking about the organic chemistry, and organic chemistry is all about carbon, hydrogen bonding, and there is a covalent bond, so we'll focus more on covalent bond. So they told covalent bond is nothing but the bond, chemical bond actually, that involves sharing of the electron pair between the atoms. I have given this definition so many times. So if you see in this case, for example, hydrogen, hydrogen, hydrogen was one electron, this guy has one electron, they want to complete the octet, but nobody is ready to give electron because if this guy will give electron, it will have zero electron. If this guy will give electron, it will have zero electron. So they will share the electron. So this hydrogen will think it has two electron, this hydrogen will think it has two electron. For example, if you see hydrogen had one electron and they wanted to form a bond, they wanted to form a bond to complete octet, but nobody was give, ready to give electron, so they shared electron. There can be another case, for example, chlorine, chlorine, chlorine has seven, this chlorine also has seven electrons, they want to form a bond, nobody is ready to give, so they'll share electron, right? So this chlorine will think it has seven plus one, eight electron, this chlorine will think it has seven plus eight electron, correct? So we'll take more examples of the bond, for example, this is methane, so methane, if you see, this is a carbon here, right? Carbon has four electrons and it want to form octet, eight electrons, since carbon has four electrons, it want to wait four more electron, right? So nobody is ready to give four electron, and carbon is also not ready to give four electron because it's very difficult, right? I mean, it's almost fifty percent uh, capability to form uh, the bond. So what it'll do? It it will form a covalent bond with hydrogen. This hydrogen will share bond electron. This hydrogen will share electron. This hydrogen will share electron. And one more hydrogen will share electrons. If you see, there are four hydrogens, and with each hydrogen, they are sharing electrons. If you see. They are sharing electrons, correct? And that is how they form bonds. So that is nothing but a bond. If you see the structure, this is a carbon, this is a sigma bond, sigma bond, sigma bond, and sigma bond. There are four sigma bond, 
and we have studied all these about uh, I mean all, about all these bonds in the past few chapters. If you have doubts, you can watch the previous videos. We have discussed about the sigma and pi bonds and other kinds of bonds. So there are four kind of four bonds here. Similarly, if you see ethene, this is the structure of ethene actually. So this is my two carbon here. This is one carbon. This is one carbon, right? And this ethene, if you see, this is sp two hybridized, right? So these. Uh, these two sp2 orbitals are like you know having a bond with hydrogens and the other is having a bond with this carbon right and these two the electrons this the pi is the, the my pi orbitals and these have extra they have electrons and they also form a bond like this and this is my double bond actually see the double bond so this this is the first single bond in the other uh, this is my pi bond actually right this pi bond came because of this so if there's a sigma bond here these are my bonds here. So they are my five sigma bonds and one pi bond. Correct. So we have discussed about the sigma and pi bond in the previous video. Similarly, if you see the uh, picture of ethyne, this is the structure. It's all sp hybridized. There are two carbons here, sp hybridized carbon, right? And these are my two double bonds. Actually, this is one double bond. This is one double bond. Two double bond form. This is my two pi bonds here. One sigma bond. And one sigma, the three sigma and two pi bonds. So this is my bond kind of concepts of bond in organic chemistry. Now we'll talk about the breakage of bond, the cleavage of bond, because in the reaction we saw that the bond breaks, the new bonds are formed, right? So there are various kinds of bond cleavage. The first is homolytic cleavage. So in this case, each of these will get equal electrons. Correct. For example, I had uh, I'll show you. So in this type of cleavage, each fragment get one electron each from the shared pair of electron. As I told you, shared pair of electron will have two electrons, right? So for example, I have my A, B, A and two are, B are two atoms and they formed a bond. So when they break, each will get one electron each. These are my electrons. Each will get one. For example, chlorine, as I told, chlorine, if you see chlorine, chlorine, when the bond broke, each chlorine got one electron each. For example, if you see bromine Br, right? I'll draw actually this chlorine for you. This chlorine has seven, and this chlorine has seven later. They wanted to form a bond, they formed this bond. Covalent bond. Each assume that it has eight electrons. Now, when the bond break, if each of these get this electron each, the one which was involved in the bonding, which is in the star now, this is called homolytic cleavage. Correct? It's a fair sharing, the fair distribution, actually. You see, it's a fair distribution. So each of the fragment got one electron each, correct? So for example, this was my methane, and if you talk about the homolytic cleavage, so that means this bond breaks, right? So chlorine should get one electron, and this carbon should get one electron. So we see chlorine got one electron, and this carbon got one electron, right? So this is a fair game, and this is one example of homolytic cleavage. So if you draw like this, it will be something like this: CH3Cl. So this bond broke. You get carbon got one bond, one dot, and the Cl got one electron. See, so now the question is what favors this kind of cleavage, right? So generally high temperature and high energy radiation, they favor. And it's a non-polar nature of bond. So if you see chlorine, chlorine, both are have same electronegativity. So it's a non-polar, right? But if you have something called uh, HCl, right? Or so in that case, is a polar nature. Chlorine is more electronegative. So in that case, we don't get homolytic cleavage because both are equal, right? Both are equally strong, right? Both are equally strong and both will want equal share. So you get equal share, right? For example, this father had two electrons and both are equally strong, right? Both are two kids and equally strong and they got one rupee each, right? So this is a homolytic cleavage, is a very a fair cleavage where you no know, each of the fragment get equal electrons. So you see, this is the representation by a, a, what you call fish hook kind of structure. This is not full. For example, if I say this kind of structure, arrow, this means transfer of two electrons. If I say half, this is transfer of one electron, right? As I, we have discussed this actually earlier. So, so the bond breaks and each of these gets one electron. So if you see, this guy got one electron and this guy got one electron. The alkyl got one electron and this is my uh, halogen got one electron. Correct. So each of these were, let's suppose, equally strong, and there was a non-polar nature of bond, and 
because the high temperature and high energy was the equal distribution of the electrons and the bond broke as homoelectric cleavage. The other scenario is called heteroelectric cleavage where you see the one gets one of this content, maybe this guy is strong and this is a weak, right? So uh, the father had two rupees, the guy snatched both the rupee and the girl got nothing, right? It may happen because the guy is maybe bully or very strong. So in that case, it is called heterolytic cleavage. This is unfair actually, it is unfair, it is unfair. So if you see uh, this type of cleavage, if you see both the shared pair of electrons are taken away by one of the fragments. Since if you see both the electrons are taken by one fragment, they will be denoted by this arrow representation. That means this, this AB was nothing but two electrons, right? So this two electrons is taken by B now, so B will get a negative charge. And A will get a positive charge, right? So in this case, these two electrons were taken away by A. So A will get a negative charge and B will get a positive charge. So either of these scenarios is possible, right? So, but in this case, one gets positive and one gets negative charge because the electron is, the, both the electron is taken by one of the species, right? So one bond means two electrons. So if the two electrons are taken by B, B gets a negative charge. One bond means two electrons. If the two electrons is taken by A, A gets a negative charge, correct? So if you see here, A got a positive charge here and B got a negative charge. So in this case, both the electrons were taken by B, right? So there were two electrons here and both these are taken by B. So B got two electrons and a negative charge. A got nothing and a positive charge, correct? Okay. So example can be, if you see CH3Cl, ZH. Now if you see this bond broke and there was a difference in the electronegativity between carbon and chlorine, right? This, this bond broke maybe, you know, as a homolytic, uh, heterolytic one. And chlorine, since chlorine was more electronegative, now here is a catch, we have to find. So in this case, in CCL, the bond will break in this fashion or bond will break in this fashion, right? So maybe chlorine will get, carbon should get two electrons or chlorine should get two electrons. So in this case, we'll find the electronegativity. So electronegativity tell, will tell which one will get electrons. So the one which is more electronegative, the one which has more tendency to grab electrons, the more which is more electron hungry, right, that will get two electrons. For example, in this case, if you compare carbon and chlorine, chlorine is more electronegative. So chlorine will get both electrons. This will not happen. It will always happen this way, right? So the bond will break in this fashion and the chlorine will get negative charge and both the electrons. Correct? If you see, chlorine by default has seven, right? And the one, this was the one which was it was participating and one it was with the other carbon, right? This is the kind of bond it has. One, two, three, four, Six, right. This was the structure it had. Now this took both the electrons. So now chlorine will have eight electrons. So if you see chlorine has two, four, six, eight electrons and a negative charge. Why negative charge? Because chlorine has uh, a neutral chlorine has seven electrons. The moment you have one electron, eight electrons, chlorine will get a negative charge. And neutral carbon should have uh, these three electrons. You remove one electron, it will get a positive charge. Right. So this carbon got a positive charge and chlorine got a negative charge. Right. So if you see in this uh, three-dimensional view, this is how it looks. I have my CH3Cl and this chlorine got removed and chlorine, if you see chlorine had this green electron was the electron which was participating in the uh, reaction, right? So chlorine took that reaction, that electron also and one electron from the carbon also which was participating in the reaction. So if you see these two were the electrons. So let me put in green. So these are my electrons. These two electrons were participating in the reaction, right? These are my two electrons. So in this case, when the bond broke, chlorine took away both the electrons, right? The, both the participating electrons. So chlorine got eight electrons actually. Now two is this and six, the, the red ones. So totally it has eight electrons now and a negative charge. And carbon got a, this positive charge is carbon. This carbon got a positive charge. Correct. So if you see this chlorine, it has, eight electrons actually. These six electrons we have not drawn because they never took part in the reaction. Actually, they were just there, lone pairs. But these greens ones were the one which took part in the bond formation, bond formation. Correct. So I had this chlorine. Chlorine had this uh, one, this green electron actually, which was taking part in the reaction. It took one from hydrogen also. So this got a negative charge. This is an example of heterolytic cleavage. Correct. And this is favored by polar nature of bonds. So if you see, if one is more electronegative, one is less electronegative, there's a slightly uh, polar nature in the bond and the presence of polar solvent. 
So if the solvent is little polar and uh, the bond is little polar. So in that case, polar means it is not fair, right? One guy is more electron hungry or one guy is less electron hungry or one has slightly negative charge, one guy has slightly positive charge, this kind of thing is polar nature. So in such case, we get heteroelectric cleavage. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors and much more. Thanks once again.